I love the word of God. See, I, I, you, you hear me say often, you've got to connect the dots in the word of God. You, you've got to go from here to here to here to here and see. And, and, and yes, we can put ourselves in the place of it. And yes, it can sometimes be confusing and not always make sense. But here's the thing. The more I dwell and meditate on the word of God, the more I am transformed or changed. Because the word renew means to be transformed as well. Can I encourage you that in 2024 that as a body of believers, as sons and daughters, as the bride of Christ, not just word of life, but as the bride of Christ, we've got to be transformed. We've got to stop being comfortable in disobedience. We've got to stop being comfortable in our opinion being more than God's word to us. We've got to stop being comfortable in, in, in putting God on the back burner instead of putting him on the, on, on the front side. We've got to stop being comfortable seeing others live a life that isn't pleasing God and is being destroyed because we are too afraid to stand up and give truth through love and say, hey, this isn't right. This isn't what God has for you. He loves you, but he has a better plan for you. Hello Word of Life, we are so happy that you are joining us this evening. If it is your first time here, we would love to connect with you. Online family, put it where you are tuning in from below in the chat. Don't forget to share the service with your friends and your family. Now stand with us as we enter in the presence of the Lord. Hello, good evening Word of Life Church family. Who's excited to be on the house of the Lord on this Sunday night? Hallelujah. Come on, who's excited? Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, if we were in a theater or watching a movie, we'd be excited. Come on, we're excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together.
shout is a weapon. My shout is a weapon. My shout is a weapon. My dance is a weapon. My dance is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. My shout is a weapon. My shout is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. My dance is a weapon. My dance is a weapon. My shout is a weapon. My shout is a weapon. thankful to be in the house of God tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. All I know is anything is possible with Jesus. Amen. Anything is possible with Jesus. Right? Come on. He breaks chains. He tears down walls. He covers us with his blood. Hallelujah. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your light. There is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won, we've already won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you. And there is no army with the power to conquer truth. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won, we've already won. Yeah. Show me. Show me a mountain he can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough. Anything is possible. Come on, can we sing that together? Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me waters he can't part. He's the God of the breakthrough. Anything is possible. Yeah, he's possible. Because of who you are, Jesus. And there is a kingdom that's advancing at the speed of light. And in his kingdom, every dead thing is bound to rise. Oh God, our Redeemer, he is faithful to revive. Oh, he will revive. church show me a mountain he can't move he's the god of the breakthrough anything is possible show me one thing show me one thing that's too hard show me waters he can't part he's the god of the breakthrough anything is possible sing it again sing show me show me one thing Show me a mountain he can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough. Anything is possible. Show me one thing. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me waters he can't part. He's the God of the breakthrough. Anything is possible. Come on, if you believe that. 
tonight, give him a shout of praise. Yeah. Oh, anything is possible with you, Jesus. Oh, anything is possible. turn into praise shake off despair as I sing out your name a victory dance I will dance out in faith I will crush disappointment and break every chain how many believe that all of my fear I will turn into praise shake off despair as I sing out your name a victory dance I will dance out in faith I will crush disappointment and break every chain all of my fear I will turn into praise Shake off despair as I sing out your name A victory dance, I will dance out in faith I will crush disappointment and break every chain Come on! All of my fear I will turn into praise Shake off despair as I sing out your name Break every chain, come on! All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. One more time. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush this. Show me one thing, show me one thing that's too hard, show me what is he can't part, he's the God of the breakthrough, anything is possible, see one more time, oh, show me, show me one thing he can't do, show me too hard for you, Jesus. Oh, anything is possible, and we trust in you. Oh, anything is possible. Hallelujah. Come on, keep that praise going for Jesus if you're thankful for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. worship you. God, we say, come and have your way in this house. We give you the room. We give you our hearts, God. Come on, let's just lift our hands right now. Begin to feel his presence in the room. you to ask him what his heart is for you this year. Oh Jesus, come and 
fill this room, oh God. Hear our shout. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. the soil I now surrender you are breaking new ground in the crushing in the pressing you are making new wine in the soil I now surrender you are breaking new ground so I yield to you and to your careful hands when I trust you I don't need to understand so make me your vessel make me offering make me whatever you want me to be God I came here with nothing but all you have given me Jesus bring new wine out of me oh, bring a new wine out of me crushing in the pressing you are making new wine in the soil I now surrender you are breaking new ground you are breaking so I yield to you and to your careful hands. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. So I yield, so I yield to you and to your careful hands. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. So I yield. So I yield to you and to your careful hands. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. One more time. So I yield to you and to your careful hands. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. So make me your vessel.
just for you Fill us with your love, oh God Fill us with your presence As we worship you As we worship you Cause where there is new wine There is new power There is new freedom And your kingdom is here Lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. And where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, and your kingdom is here. I'll lay down my old flames. To carry your new fire today And where there is new wine There is new power There is new freedom And your kingdom is here I lay down my old flames To carry your new fire today to carry your new fire today. Carry your new fire today. You know, every time I think about this song, I'm reminded of a battery. You know, we go throughout the week or even throughout the day, you know, whether it's phones, equipment, anything like that, right? And as we use it up, the battery just gets lower and lower and lower. And there comes a point where we have to recharge it, right? We have to plug it in. And I think about that in our own lives. We go every single day, we go every single week, every single second, doing something, thinking about something, and using our battery. And I feel like sometimes we forget that we have to be recharged too. Sometimes we just go and go and go not understanding what rest is, not understanding what recharging is. And every time we come into this house, it should be a moment of recharging, right? We should just take everything we have and say, God, here it is on the table. I was dealing with this this week. I was dealing with this this week. I was having a hard time here, hard time there and didn't understand why you did this, why you did that. But despite all of that, I'm coming here to feel your presence to be recharged. Every time we come into this house, it shouldn't be because of a we have to mentality, right? You hear pastors say all the time, we, we need to change that from we have to, to we get to. Because I get to stand in the presence of God week in and week out to feel what he wants to say, to feel what he wants to do in my life. And this song is talking about bringing a new wine out of us. The only way we bring a new wine is to get rid of the old wine, right? We heard Pastor. We heard Pastor Ford say it all the time. Out with the old, in with the new. And 
what are the things that I'm reminded of? No matter how many times life may get tough, no matter how many times I may feel weak, or it may feel like my battery's at my lowest, I know that when I get in the presence of God, there's a recharge coming. There's a new wine coming because I want to get rid of all the old and put in the new. Amen. So I just encourage you as we worship, just let everything go to Jesus. You may not be feeling anything, right? You may not be feeling any hardships or you, you know, life may be great. Still, give it all to Jesus because that's something to be thankful for right? Not everybody has those moments. And if you are feeling a hardship or you're, you're going through something, you say, God, here it is. I feel this, that, and the other, and I need you to help me. I need you to show me what to do. I need you to tell me how to handle this, that, and the other, right? Jesus is amazing. His presence is amazing. And if you, if you would just plug into it and give Him the moment. You know, it's not about knowing every single song. It's not about coming here on Sundays. But it's about building a corporate relationship with God that takes you into a personal relationship every single day. Amen. Come on, are you with me this, this evening? Are you with me this evening? I don't know about you, but I want that new wine. Come on, it's 2024. There's a lot of things in store. And I want to tap into it. Do you want to tap into that tonight? Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, oh God. Bring a new wine out of us. Bring a new wine out of us. Because oh. where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom. And your kingdom is here. I lay down my old flame. To carry your new fire today And where there is new wine There is new power There is new freedom And your kingdom is here I lay down my old flames To carry your new fire today to carry your new fire today carry your new fire today so make me your vessel make me an offering make me whatever you want me to be God I came here with nothing but all you have given me Jesus bring new wine out of me make me a vessel make me a vessel make me an offering make me whatever you want me God, I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring a new wine. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. One more time. Jesus, bring new wine out of me.
Father, we just come to you, God, and we say, here we are to feel your presence in this room, to feel the fresh oil that you want to pour out, God. And God, we declare that we will continue to trust in you, continue to keep you as our foundation, to build our life upon you, Jesus. Jesus, we trust in you. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Because you are holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up. heart and lead me in your love to those around me. To those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Cause you're the name. Jesus, the name above every other name. You're the only one. Jesus, the only one. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Oh, cause you are holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. And show me who you are and fill me with your heart.
must declare that have your way have your way in me have your way have your way in me oh have your way of the earth full of riches had everything God gave him all the wisdom and all knowledge there's not anything that he did not know or understand Solomon searched the world searched to and fro trying to find purpose of life trying to find his own purpose in life and he came to this very conclusion I am nothing without God there is nothing that I can do on my own. There is no joy. There is no peace. There is no happiness. There is nothing without God. So as Lord, as we invite you in here tonight, oh God, oh, oh Lord, we say have your way. Have your way, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord, have your way, Lord. 
Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Have your way, Lord. We give you our all. We give you our all, oh God. We lay it all down at your feet this morning. We lay it all down right now. Have your way in me, oh Lord. Lord, yes, Lord. Determine that. Declare it for yourself. Sing along with us. Oh, have your way. Have your way in me. Here I am. I am here. I am. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way in me. Oh, have your way. ourselves to the Lord as a holy sacrifice holy and acceptable and taking on what? the will of God the perfect will of God so Lord we present ourselves to you tonight oh Lord oh yes Lord as a living sacrifice Lord accept us oh God accept our praise accept our worship oh Lord oh yes Lord yes Lord we declare this moment, O oh God, your sovereignty, O oh Lord. We declare, O oh God, that we are nothing without you. Lord, we exalt all our inabilities in you. For Lord God, you are, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, the God of the impossible. There is nothing too hard. There is nothing that you can't do, O oh God. So, Lord, through this night, oh, Lord, I ask that you would just speak to us. Speak to us, oh, God, and through us, oh, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And whatever you say, oh, Lord, let us be those people that says, yes, Lord. No matter what it is, yes, Lord. Let us be yes men and women. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your presence is in this place. As we glorify you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. Mm, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, we determine right now, oh God, the breakthrough, oh God. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. That weary heart and weary mind, oh God. We declare it to fall right now. We declare that there will be joy right now. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I declare right now, oh God, that there will be a peace. There will be a peace, oh God, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. That surpasses all understanding, oh God. Oh, yes, Lord, as your word says, oh God. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you. We honor you, oh Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I feel like the Lord says, don't be in a rush. Don't be in a rush. Mm, he's working, he's working, he's working, and he's moving. Mm, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, you are. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Have your way, Lord, have your way. Here I am, Lord. Have your way. Here we are, Lord, have your way.
where I want to be your presence where I want to be in your presence is where I want to be forever forever in your presence is where I want to be in your presence where I want to be in your presence is where I want to be forever forever in your presence is where I want to be in your presence is where I want to be your presence is where I want to be forever, forever. Here I am for you, God. Here I am to sit in your presence. Here I am. thank you for your presence for your word that you've spoken into our hearts <laughs> yes Lord yes Lord oh yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord come on saints his presence is here things are easy in his presence deliverance is easy in his presence healing is easy in his presence <laughs> yes Lord Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your presence, oh God. Mm, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. There's such a peace. There's such a peace in his presence that you never want to get out of it, that you never want to leave from it. Mm. So let our, our pursuit this year and renewing, let our pursuit be a daily encounter of his presence. Not just on Sundays and Wednesdays, but daily. He wants to be in your lives daily. He wants to be a full-time God, not a part-time God. Mm, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. Mm, yes, Lord, we say have your way, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Let's give the Lord a hand. Clap, praise, shout something. And if he's been good to you, you've definitely got something to praise him about. If you walk through those doors tonight, you've got something to praise him about. He woke you up this morning. He's got something to praise him about. Lord, it is Lord, we praise you, Lord, and we love you. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Glory to your name. Let us prepare our hearts to continue to praise the Lord through our giving, through our tithes and giving, tithes and offering. I'm not going to go into it too deeply tonight, but as we all know, here at Word of Life, we believe in the biblical tithe tithe is 10% of anything that comes into your hand. Anything above that is an offering, right? God honors the tithe. And he is faithful, man. He is faithful when you are faithful in your tithing and giving, right? 
When you tithe and you give, sometimes you, you're just saying, Lord, I trust you. You may not look like you have enough, but you do have enough. Lord, I trust you with, because you are my source. Lord, I trust you. Let us, this year, if you haven't started tithing, sometimes people say, I can't afford to tithe. Let me tell you something. You can't afford not to tithe. Man, God is faithful. And he does, he, he, he never lets you go lack. He never lets you go without. Right? He's a father, right? Our father's in the house. We always want to make sure that our children are taken care of, right? Don't you think God, the heavenly father, who is, owns everything, he owns a cattle on a thousand hills, right? Man, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So, ushers, usherettes, you can prepare yourself for tithing and offering. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. So, Father God, as we come before you in our worship, worship in our tithe and our offerings tonight, O oh Lord. Lord, as your word says, your Lord, that you will give it back 100-fold, O oh God. Lord, I ask you to bless those that can give and those that cannot give, O oh God. Lord, I, I ask you, the Lord, to just show who you are. Lord, your word says, try me. Let someone here tonight try you, Lord, and watch them see your goodness, O oh God, because you are a man that never lies. You will always take care of your children. And we declare that everyone here is a child of yours, oh God. You're going to meet every need. For the earth is, is yours and the fullness thereof. And we thank you right now. So let us rejoice and come in and bring in our tithes and offerings tonight. You can give three ways. If you're not giving here in the house, you can give text. Or you can give online or in the mail. Amen. Let us come rejoicing bringing our tithes and offering. Praise the Lord. And at this time, turn your attention to the screen for tonight's announcements. Welcome to Word of Life. We are so glad to see you in church today. Our culture is loving God, loving people, changing lives. If this is your first time with us, then we would love to connect with you. You can do so by scanning the QR code or by filling out one of these cards in the seat in front of you and handing it out to an usher on your way out. Now let's see what's happening here at Word of Life. Okay, positive students, we just would like to let you know that this Thursday is Thrive Youth at the Dome from 7 to 8.30 p.m. We would love to see you there, and also we encourage you to bring new friends as well, and we look forward to seeing you Thursday at the Dome. Our groups are starting back up this week, starting tonight at 4.30 with our 12-step group. Also Tuesday at noon, we have prayer group, which is live streamed. So if you can't make it, we encourage you to engage online. Tuesday evenings at 6.30 is men's group. However, that will be resuming on the 23rd. Thursdays, we have women's group at noon and marriage group at 6 o'clock. We encourage you to invite somebody, bring those that can connect as we begin to build community. Parents, mark your calendars. Baby dedication will be happening on Sunday, January 28th during the 10 a.m. service. To register your little ones to be dedicated, please scan the QR code or stop by the merch table to sign them up today. The word of the house is renewed, and we look forward to taking this word to the reservation. January 25th to the 27th, we will be at Red Valley Chapter House in Red Valley, Arizona. Services will start at 7 o'clock p.m. each night. Keep an eye out on the socials as all information will be listed. We do look forward to seeing you there. We want to encourage you to follow us on all our socials to stay up to date. Thank you for joining us today. Amen. Well, Pastor Michael is driving his biological father right now to his doctor's appointment, which is in, is it Raton? 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 
Okay. So <laughs> it's about a six hour drive. So he will not be here tonight. So be praying for traveling mercies for Pastor Michael and his father and for his doctor's appointments the next couple days. Amen. All right. Who's excited for the word tonight? Amen. Yes. Amen. All right. Well, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you for this night. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. Father God, we just love you so much, Father God. And we just pray tonight that you would renew us in your word, Father. Lord, that you would bring truth tonight, Father. And God, I just pray that you would guide my words, Lord. Have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. As we were singing, have your way, Lord. Right? That should be one of our prayers each and every day. Is, Lord, have your way in my life. And how many were you, of you were here? I think it was last Sunday morning when Cynthia shared her testimony during praise and worship. Amen. It was so powerful. And then Pastor Michael brought her up front and had her pray over us. He really felt like the, the Lord had a word for her to pray over us. And it was so powerful. And the Lord just kept speaking to me through that, through her testimony and through God's goodness. And I was just taking notes. Amen. So a lot of what I have to share tonight is due to Cynthia's obedience to the Lord in sharing her testimony. Amen. And I don't know, did Pastor Chris get that script or that picture of the precipice? Was he able? Okay, if you can get that ready for me. So I, a lot of times the Lord will speak to me in a word that I don't know, so that I know, okay, Lord, this is you speaking to me, right? And, and I'll look up the word. And um, precipice is a very steep rock face or a cliff. And, um, but when, when Cynthia was praying, she was standing right at the edge of the platform here. And I just saw her leaping out in faith, you know, fearless, like I'm doing this, right? She didn't even second guess whether or not she was going to do it. And so this is a precipice right here, right? And that's where I see us at right now in our faith. We're fearless, like whatever the Lord asks of us to do, we're going to leap out in faith, right? We're not going to go by what we see because that's kind of scary. <laughs> I don't know about you, but in the physical, I would not want to jump off of that. But in the spiritual realm, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Amen? But, you know, I was also reminded as, um, as Cynthia shared her testimony and the Lord was speaking to me about a precipice and us leaping out in faith. Um, how many of you were here for the New Year's Eve service? Right? <laughs> and at midnight, Pastor Michael takes off running, jumps off this platform here, and gives me a quick kiss. And it, like, caught me off guard. And I was like, okay. If I wanted to jump out of the way, I couldn't because I had no time. And he told me that night that he was thinking in his head, should I do this or not? And he said right away, he said, I'm doing it. And he just jumped off the platform, right? And Pastor Michael has had two knee surgeries in one knee and one knee surgery in the other knee. So it probably wasn't wisdom for him to jump off the platform. <laughs> but thank God for, for his faithfulness and goodness, even when we do things that may not be wisdom. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but that's just where I see us right now is the Lord you know, really given us that faith to go when he asks of us. And this morning's message, you know, when Pastor Michael was talking about the word of the year for 2024 is renew. And how um, the first step is repentance, right? Getting our life right with the Lord. And then the next step is obedience, right? So as we, on a daily basis, are um, repenting and asking the Lord to show us the things that we're doing, the, the showing us the things that we're looking at, the things that we're partaking in that's not pleasing to him so that we can repent of those things and he can renew us. So then from there, as we're spending time in his word, you know, as he leads us to do things, we're going to be obedient, right? We're not going to hold back. Whereas maybe in the past, you've kind of thought about, should I do this? Uh, I don't know. And you really go a day, a week, months, or years without doing it. 
And then, you know, I believe the reason why so much time goes past after the Lord has asked us to do things is because we, we weren't obedient or we didn't really seek him in what he was asking of us to do so that he could give us the faith to leap out to, as he's asking us to do those things. Amen. And, you know, I'm reminded of when we first moved to New Mexico from Ohio. I left my whole entire family. Thank God we had Pastor Barbara and Pastor Ford here. And, you know, it took a lot of faith and courage to do that. But we knew that we heard from the Lord to move to New Mexico. And I had been spending time with the Lord for two weeks asking him, Lord, what would you have of us, right? And he began to speak to me. Clean out the closets, have a yard sale, pack your bags, and move to New Mexico. I kept hearing that over and over. And that's the, the way that the Lord will speak to you sometimes, is you'll hear the same thing over and over. Amen? Or he'll show you things. And um, I wanted to read to you tonight in Psalms chapter 18 and verse 29. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. For by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. Right? For by you I can run against a troop. And by my God I can leap over a wall. Amen? And then in the New Living Translation for Psalms 18 and verse 29, it says, In your strength... I can crush an army. With my God, I can scale any wall, right? With God, all things are possible. Nothing's too hard for him. And whatever he is asking of us, he's going to give us the words. He's going to give us the courage as we spend time with him. And as we say yes, the more we say yes to him, the more boldness we're going to have and the more faith that we're going to have to see like God you you really were asking me to share this word with this person right because you know the Lord will show you things about somebody so that you can encourage them right that will open their eyes and just as Pastor Michael jumped off the platform here caught me off guard I really believe that those things that the Lord shows us about people so that we can encourage them it really catches them off guard as well and opens their eyes to really think like, God, you are real. God, you are here. When I thought you weren't here, you are here and you are working. Amen? So it's time for us to step out in faith and to do the things the Lord is calling us. You know, God will give us the ability and the stamina and to be able to leap out in faith, we must have that the strength from our Father. Right? We must wait on the Lord to find rest. Wait on the Lord for him to give us peace, to comfort us, to counsel us in the things that we're going through, right? We, we have Holy Spirit with us at all time to comfort us and, and to help us. He's our helper. He's our advocate. He wants to fight on our behalf, right? And he's just waiting on us to spend time with him and to ask him to help us. All right, now I wanted to read in Mark eleven twenty two, which so many of us know thanks to Pastor Ford. But Mark eleven, chapter two, verses or Mark chapter eleven, verses twenty two through twenty four in the New Living Translation. Then Jesus said to the disciples, Have faith in God. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Right? Faith to move mountains, to leap out in faith, to do the things he's asking of us and the things he's calling us to do. Right? And I think about the Kaya ladies and how you all go out and minister and share your testimony. And I'm sure the first time you shared your testimony, it might have been kind of scary, right? And the more you do it, just the more confidence you have. And as you see people's lives changed and transformed, you just can't wait now to share your testimony. Amen? Amen. Um, 
And then I want to also read in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 20 in the New Living Translation. You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth. If you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Right? And as we're spending time with the Lord and as he's ministering to us, as he's speaking to us these things, you know, we can line up God's perfect will over our lives. And I really seeing us leaping in to spending time with the Lord, into his word, where at times you're probably like, oh, I don't feel like reading today. But now you're like, I just can't wait to read the word of God and hear what my father has to share with me today. And to ask him, Father, give me, I'm asking for wisdom, knowledge in your word. What do you have to speak to me today? And having our heart opened to hear. Sometimes the reason we don't hear from the Lord is because we have not asked the Lord to show us, show us me so that we can repent. We have a hardened heart because we don't want anybody to know what we're doing, right? The sin that's in our lives. God knows everything. Right? And he knows what's best. And we need to allow him to soften our hearts and, and to show, allow him to show us, show us us. Amen? Yes. Um, so the other day I lost my wedding ring. <laughs> this was on Friday evening. Right before we went to dinner, I could not find my wedding ring. And I, I normally won't leave my house until I find it, but we were like crunch time. We had to hurry to get to dinner. So uh, when I got back home, I'm looking, you know, I'm searching everywhere. And at this point, I'm asking Gavin, I'm asking Landon, Hannah, like all my kids, please pray that I find my ring. And I even asked Cynthia, please pray that I find my ring. You know, I'm asking all these people to pray for me. <laughs> and I was really thinking about that the other day. We, a lot of times, rely on other people to pray for us, right? It's not a bad thing to ask people to pray on our behalf, but gosh, if we could just go into prayer on our own, right? Asking the Lord and believing God on our own, that's where the faith comes from. That's where the freedom comes from. That's where his guidance comes from. So let's not rely on other people to go to the Lord for us, right? We can go to him wherever we're at, if we're driving down the road, getting ready, wherever we're at, spend time with him all throughout the day. Ask him to speak. Ask him to guide you. Ask him to show you. Ask him for freedom. Ask him for strength. Amen? So, he's so good. But, you know, just the more time that goes by when I'm looking for something, I'm just so frustrated. Right? And I'm just really praying and asking the Lord, where's my ring? I'm looking throughout the house. So um, I think it wasn't that next day, but it was the next day I got in my van and underneath the, whatever that dashboard, whatever it's called, underneath that is a place where I can put my sunglasses and stuff. There was my wedding ring. And I was just thanking God for his faithfulness because I was really thinking, I'm going to have to go get a new wedding ring, <laughs> which would be nice, but I really love my wedding ring, right? <laughs> So for that day and a half, I pulled out my old rings from when Pastor Michael and I were dating. I used to have a ring for every finger. Like, I really loved rings back then. So I pulled out two of my rings that kind of looked like a wedding ring, and I was wearing those, and I just, I'm like, Lord, I want my wedding ring. I really want my wedding ring, right? You know, because once I got the real ring, <laughs> I didn't need those other rings on my finger, right? I was happy once I got the real thing. <laughs> okay. And, you know, I was thinking about Carrie and your business. And you said, was it for 20 years that you were believing God? Or how long was it, the process? Huh? About 16 years that she was believing God for the miracle that just took place for her business. And I'm so thankful for God's faithfulness. Right, And for her team that were praying and working so hard. And there were so many times 
where you know it didn't go through and you were heartbroken and you probably could have given up right in that moment but nope you persevered you kept standing you kept working you kept believing and now you know it's still a process and we're still praying that God is going to work out every detail amen amen Okay, let's read in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. In the New Living Translation, Stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore you, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. Right? You know, the enemy's out here trying to take us out, but, you know, I see us being so in tune with the spirit of the Lord and our relationship with him. I just see us jumping over all those, you know, barriers that he's trying to put in place to stop us. We can see them ahead of time and we're ready, right? We have allowed the Lord to strengthen us, to restore us, to support us. And he is placing us on a firm foundation. So nothing is going to cause us to fall or to stumble, right? We are strong in the Lord and the power of his might. We put on our full armor, right? We're praying at all times in the Holy Spirit, and we're praying on behalf of one another at all times. That's what we're called to do, to constantly be standing on the word of God, putting on his armor, putting on our armor, standing in the gap for one another, praying for one another, in asking him to give us the boldness to preach the gospel, right? He will give us the boldness. We don't need to waver in our faith anymore. There's so many people out there that don't go to church, that don't know about Jesus, right? And we need to reach out to them. Coworkers and, you know, family members, all those that are out there. And, but, you know, I just see us leaping over every obstacle that comes our way. Right, and um, Annika and Luke like watching the, like the Ninja Warrior, like these kids on YouTube. And I was watching it one day, these, these little kids whose parents put an obstacle course out back of their house. And first the little girl's doing it, you know, and she, she made it all the way. But when her little brother came through there, he like blazed through the place, like all these obstacles. And that's just what I, I see us doing, like just like the Ninja Warrior course we're focused, right? We're, we're disciplined. We're strong. We're strengthened by the Lord. So we're going to get through this. Amen. Everything that comes our way, we have faith that moves mountains. When God speaks something to you about something about your life, you're not going to, you're not going to worry about it. You're not going to be fearful about it because you have spent time with him. You know the word of God, and you know what he's asking of you, and you know that he will help you every step of the way. Amen. And, you know, um, Pastor Michael shared early, earlier this morning. He said, stop overthinking and say, yes, Lord. Right? Sometimes we just really think and think and think and let our mind wander aimlessly. But no, I'm going to stay disciplined and really ask, Lord, is this, is this what I need to be thinking about right now, right? And really, you know, like, is this something that the Lord would be speaking to me? And I remember as a, a young girl, and I was thinking about this the other day, why was I thinking, like, these thoughts? I was thinking, like, if I were to die right now, what would, who would be crying for me? You know, like, who would be sad? And I would think about this a lot, and I don't know why. And I don't think I have ever told anybody this. And I really think it's because of my older brother that died in a car accident. He was 20 and I was 11. You know, my, my family went through a lot through that. And I was thinking, maybe that's why I would, would think, what would, you know, if I were to die today, who would be crying for me? 
right? But we shouldn't be thinking that way. We should be looking forward to our eternity in heaven. We should really be thinking, God, I want to make an impact. I want to make a difference in somebody's life. I don't want them to be crying for me. I want them to be going forward in the Lord and what you know you have for them. That's what we should be really, um, really making an impact and a difference in somebody's life. Amen? Yes. And uh, let's read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. The New Living Translation. You know, we have read this scripture so many times, I'm sure, over and over. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Amen? And, you know, the part that really used to stick out to me there was the old life is gone. But the Lord really had this part stick out to me. A new life has begun, right? That's what we should be looking forward to is our new life in him. Not looking back at what the past, what's taken place in the past. But Father, I'm looking forward to my new life with you, my new relationship with you. Amen. Not looking back to the old ways. God, I'm looking forward to the, to the new things that you have for me. Amen. Renew my mind, Father. Renew my mind in your word, Father. Amen. Now let's read in Psalms 119. This is a long chapter, and I really love this chapter in Psalms. Psalms 119. And I'm going to start in verse 25. In the New Living Translation, so Psalms 119 and verse 25. I lie in the dust, revive me by your word. I told you my plans and you answered. Right? It says, I told you my plans and you answered. Are we talking to the Lord? (laughs) Are we sharing with him? the desires of our heart or what we're going through, amen, so that he can answer our prayers, so that he can speak to us and give us a word that we need to hear. Okay, so in verse 26, I told you my plans and you answered. Now teach me your decrees. We could pretty much pray these scriptures here. Verse 27, help me understand the meaning of your commandments and I will meditate on your wonderful deeds. 28, I weep with sorrow. Encourage me by your word. Right, so there he's sharing with him what he's going through. I weep with sorrow. And he's asking the Lord, encourage me by your word. So these are things that we can pray and ask the Lord. Don't just rush through and say, I, oh great, I read a chapter today. You know, sometimes we really rush through things and we don't get what the Lord wants to speak to us. In verse 29, keep me from lying to myself. Who needs help there? (laughs) Right? I know I need a lot of help there. Lord, keep me from lying to myself. Give me the privilege of knowing your instructions. Verse 30, I have chosen to be faithful. I have chosen to be faithful. I have determined to live by your regulations. I cling to your laws. Lord, don't let me be put to shame. I will pursue your commands, for you expand my understanding. He will expand our understanding as we spend time with him, as we read his word. Now, verse 33. Teach me your decrees, O Lord. I will keep them to the end. Amen? And how do we keep them to the end? By having a relationship with him by reading his word daily and not going off of yesterday's word or last month's word or last year's word or what we heard in service. We need to have our own spiritual time with the Lord, daily time with the Lord. In verse 34, give me understanding and I will obey your instructions. A lot of times the reason we don't obey his instructions is because we don't know what we're doing is wrong. 
I will put them into practice with all my heart. Verse 35. Make me walk along the path of your commands, for that is where my happiness is found. Amen. We find happiness in his word. Verse 36. Give me an eagerness for your laws rather than a love for money. You know, the things of this world, right? We need to have an excitement for his word. In verse 37, turn my eyes from worthless things. Turn my eyes from worthless things and give me life through your word. Verse 38, reassure me of your promise made to those who fear you, right? I think we need that reassurance each and every day of his promises, of his goodness. In verse 39, Help me abandon my shameful ways, for your regulations are good. Verse 40, I long to obey your commandments. Renew my life with your goodness. Renew my life with your goodness. There's the word right there, renew. And as we long to obey his commandments, he will renew life to us with his goodness. In verse 41, Lord, give me your unfailing love, the salvation that you promised me. We need to know his unfailing love so that we can love one another, so we can love those that may hurt us or or come against us. Amen? Verse 42, Then I can answer those who taunt me, for I trust in your word. You know, sometimes our mind just can... We can have so many thoughts and things, you know, coming against us, all these taunts, you know. And it says, I can answer those who taunt me, for I trust in your word. And how important is it for us to speak the word of God over the the lies of the enemy and the things that we're going through? Verse 43, "Do do not snatch your word of truth from me, for your regulations are my only hope. I will keep on obeying your instructions forever and ever. 45. I will walk in freedom, for I have devoted myself to your commandments. Amen. This, it's such a good chapter in Psalms 119. I encourage you to read, you know, from verse 1 all the way down. It's a long chapter, but it's so good, you know, and it'll say a lot of things over and over, which we need to hear these things over and over so that we can really get it inside our heart and we can meditate on it. So when hard times comes, we'll remember those words that we read and we'll ask the Lord for strength and help in in those moments. And um, in pre-service prayer this morning, I was just really praying for mothers. And I wanted to pray over the mothers tonight. Amen? So if you're a mother... I've, I've read this scripture. It's in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. And I've never really thought about it for mothers, but a mother of babies, of toddlers, you know, and as the seasons change, it doesn't get easier as they get older. I remember when my kids were little thinking, I can't wait until they're, you know, older to do things on their own. And now I'm like, can we go back to those moments <laughs> when I could tell them what to wear and tell them where we were going and tell them what we're doing, right? <laughs> but I really wanted to pray for mothers. And I'm going to read this to you in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up, right? And this can go for grandmas and even fathers and, and grandpas as well. Let's not get tired of doing what is good for our children, right? We need his, his help and his guidance. And at the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. And we need the Father's guidance in how to parent. And each child is different. Each child is different. And I, I know I need the Lord's help so many times throughout the day before service you know I'm trying to finish up my notes and the kids are fighting and I really want to focus and it's really hard when when the kids are fighting and 
run. I, I, I feel like moms do not have a moment of peace. <laughs> I have a friend that has six kids, and she'll go to her garage and hide out in her van and eat chocolate so that her kids can't find her. <laughs> and I'm so glad she told me that because that's like the, the perfect place to hide because if I go to my room, I can lock the door, but like the knocking annoys me, so I have to, I have to answer. So I can't hide in, in my bedroom. So I'm always asking the Lord, help me, Father. <laughs> help me to stay calm. Help me to be patient and help me to discipline in love, right? There's so many moments where you want to just lash out. And once you're all in with that, there's no coming back. <laughs> I can tell you that from personal experience. And the Lord has really been softening my heart and giving me patience with my children. I'm still a work in progress, right? With Pastor Michael, he's, I'm, I'm really good with him, but with the kids, I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, I need, a, I need a lot of help. Maybe it's because there's five of them, so I feel like I'm getting ganged, ganged up upon, right? <laughs> but there's nothing like your home, you know, peace and quiet, so wonderful. And we need to find those moments with the Lord so that we can hear from him, him wherever it's at. And I've noticed a lot of times when I go outside and take a walk, that's where I hear from the Lord a lot. You know, and I'll pray, pray in the Holy Spirit and I'll worship and the Lord will speak to me through the outside, especially the mountains. I love, love the mountains so much. So you need to find that place for you wherever it's at. Some people have a prayer closet. Pastor Michael has too many shoes and too many clothes for me to even walk into our closet. We have to share a closet, so pray for me. To, we need our own. Pastor Michael needs like two closets, but it's going to be all right. He's always given shoes away, so that's why I say he's so blessed in the shoe area because he's always giving. He's always giving. So, Father, we just thank you for Pastor Michael's closet, <laughs> his shoe closet. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But I just want to encourage you all tonight to step out in all that the Lord has for you. Amen. He's so good and so faithful. And this morning, Miss Camula, she got this new hot pink jacket. <laughs> and... This morning was just such an awesome service, you know, and praise and worship, and Pastor Michael got up here and did the exhort, and, you know, we were believing God for household salvation, and Miss Kimula leaps off the platform once again. <laughs> the Lord's just, he, when he speaks to me, it's just over and over about things. So she leaps off the platform, and she's running, you know, she's just thanking God for her family, and I just wanted to grab her arm right with her and say, I just receive this for you. Amen. I receive this for your family. They're coming in one by one. Amen. Yes. And Miss Kimula, you were meant to stand out. I just wanted to share that with you. You were meant to stand out. Amen. Yes. Amen. All right. Well, that's the word that I have for you tonight. And I, I want to pray over us tonight to really take hold of his word to take hold of the instructions that he has for us, the knowledge, the wisdom that he has for us, that we would search the hidden mysteries and treasures in his word. Amen. And in even reading a scripture over and over, the Lord will, will show me different things the more that I read of that scripture. So continue to read the word. And if you don't have your favorite scripture, ask the Lord for scriptures to stand on. And to declare, even over your children. You know, I have little um, index cards of scriptures that I had written for my kids when we lived in Florida, and I need to update them. I don't think Luke has scriptures written down, but it's time. It's time to declare the word of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. All right. So I'm going to pray tonight. Father, we just 
come to you tonight, Father. We thank you for what you're doing here, Father. God, we thank you for what you're showing us, Lord, that, it, Lord, it's time for us to step out in faith, God, in what you are calling us to, Father. Lord, I just pray for our pursuit with you to grow, Lord, that we would be so excited, Lord, when we get up in the morning, Father, that we would get up out of our beds, God, and just thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness, Father, that we would welcome you right then and there, God, to be with us all throughout the day, God. Not when we feel bad or we're going through a hard situation, Father, but first thing in the morning, God, that we would worship you, we would honor you and recognize that you're with us, Father God. And Lord, I just pray over each and every person to come to know your voice, Father, clearly. Lord, that they would know it's you speaking to them. Father, that if some are just now coming to read your word that are just coming to know you right now father i pray that they would not give up that they would continue to pursue you and to search you god in the way that you would speak to them lord jesus and father that lord the gifts and the talents that you have for us father that you're constantly calling us god and lord i just pray over each and every person father that we would take hold of the gifts and the talents that you have for us. Lord, as you are calling us each and every day, Father, I pray that we would say, yes, Lord. We wouldn't worry or think about how am I gonna do this, Father, but that we would say, yes, Lord. Immediately, God, we would step out in faith to do what you're calling us to, Father. Lord, as you lead us to pray for somebody, Lord, even somebody that we don't know, Father, God, that you would speak to us about that person. And I pray that we would be bold to share those words with them and to pray for them, Lord, as Pastor Michael did in, in the store parking lot the other day, God. Lord, that we wouldn't worry, God, about what we're saying, that we would just allow you, Lord, to work, Father. And the more, Lord, that this person is hearing your word, Father, that their heart is being softened, Lord, and we don't know, Lord, which moment they're going to choose to say yes to what you're calling them to, to say yes to salvation, Lord, to welcome you, Lord, into their lives, Father. And Lord, help us to be soul winners. Lord, that we would be so focused on you, God, that we would not worry about what's going on around us. We would not be selfish and only thinking about ourselves, Father. Lord, but that we would put others before ourselves, Father. And show us, Lord, those that need to know you, those that you are calling us to witness to and lead into the salvation prayer, Father. Lord, that we would lead you right to them right then and there. We wouldn't just say, come to church. That right then and there, God, we would lead them to you so that they would want to come to church, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, you're so powerful. You're all-knowing, God. Nothing is impossible with you, Father. So, Father, I pray that we would pray bold prayers. We would pray prayers that lines up with your perfect will and plan, Father God. Yes, Father. Lord Jesus, you're sitting at the right hand of the Father, pleading on our behalfs, Father. And, Lord, each and every day as we pray, God, we want our prayers to line up with your prayers, Lord Jesus. Yes, Father. That we're not going to worry anymore about how long should I pray or what am I going to say, Father? That we're just going to welcome you, Lord. We're going to worship you. We're going to praise you. And we're going to allow you to lead us, Lord, in prayer in that time with you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And Father, right now, Lord, those that are here, those that are watching online, I pray that you would renew them. Lord, you would restore them, Father, and strengthen them. Lord, in their walk with you, Father, if they have lost heart or lost their faith, Father, if they have lost the way, God, I pray tonight there will be restoration, there will be a renewal, Father, that you're purifying our hearts right now, Lord, and renewing in us a right spirit, a loyal spirit, Father, that's dedicated to you, Father. And we thank you for it, Father. Lord, let our faith arise tonight, God. Lord, the things that you want to do in our personal lives, in our families, our marriages, our children, Father God, I pray that our faith would arise, God. 
that we would write down the things that we're believing God for, that we would write down the things that you're calling us to, Father, and we would begin to pray over them and seek your face concerning them, Father. And Lord, as we do that and we come together here as a church family, Lord, that we would unify our prayers, God, that we would pray bold prayers, God, that would move mountains, Father, because our faith has been strengthened by you, Lord. You have shown us, Lord, ahead of time what is coming, Lord, so that we can pray and seek your face concerning it, God. And we thank you for it. Thank you for the words that have been spoken over us, Father. Yes, Lord, we speak life right now, Father, to all those prophetic words, Father. And we come against every negative word, every idle word, Father. Lord, we just thank you, Father, that those words are broken. In Jesus' name, we plead the blood of Jesus, Father. We thank you, Father, that whatever you bind on earth is bound on, in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven, Father God. And Lord, we pray, God, every idle word, every negative word, we bind it and we loose it right now in Jesus' name, Father. We declare freedom in this place, in our lives personally. We declare freedom in our marriages. We declare freedom over our children and over our families and our church family. We declare freedom over Farmington, the four corners, over the reservation. Lord, everywhere that you're calling us to, God. Lord, nothing is impossible Lord, with you. Lord, as you call us, Lord, to do these things, to give, to go here, Father, that you will provide and make a way. We wouldn't worry. We wouldn't waver. But we will go as you ask of us. We will give as you ask of us, Father. Thank you, Lord. We pray, have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. What an amazing encounter we had in the presence of the Lord came forth. We want to encourage you to go back and re-listen to the message and hear what the Lord is speaking to you. If you need prayer, we are here for you. You can put your request in the chat and we'll add it to our prayer list. Also, if you prayed the prayer with Pastor and made the decision to follow Jesus, let us know by scanning the QR code and we want to celebrate with you. Thank you so much and we can't wait to meet again Wednesday midweek at 7 o'clock. See you then.